It's strange that when we look over a car, we see through the components which may have taken as much time and money to develop as the metal panels. Modern glass technology means that we can have cars in all sorts of curvy aerodynamic shapes. However, in the pioneering days of motoring, glass had to be either flat or, well, flat. It didn't just look boring, it could be pretty dangerous as well. I suppose in the first instance with all the cars, they had nothing to screen them from the wind and rain. Uh, glass was available, but glass wasn't very safe. But for many years, people used plate glass, ordinary plate glass in windscreens, uh, with obvious consequences, with some very serious accidents. And this was a position that went on until uh, 1910, when, like uh, all good chemistry, some chemist knocked a flask of material over onto the floor, left it overnight, and when he came back, the flask was still in one piece. What he'd done is to make cellulose acetate, and cellulose acetate polymerizes to give you celluloid, and so celluloid was the first interlayer material on a laminated windscreen. The celluloid bound the glass together so that in the event that it broke, it didn't fly. It was much more safe. The old glass, which was laminated, the cellul cellulose acetate or cellulose nitrate type of uh, laminate, had a feature which many of you may remember, which is that it tended to go yellow in sunlight. So some of the very old cars from the 1920s looked as though they had yellow glass. This was just a degradation of the cellulose nitrate in the interlayer. These days, the production of laminated glass incorporates PVB instead of the old yellowing cellulose nitrate. The 1949 Austin A90 was one of the first to use a curved screen with a wraparound rear, and as time went on with car designs, a larger area could be glazed without compromising safety, strength, or optical quality. If you wonder why there are these black bits around the edge of your windows, they're actually ceramic obscuration bands, baked on and help to stop sunlight from affecting the strength of the adhesive which keeps the glass secure. When you look at the variety of vehicles on our roads today, you'll appreciate the work that glass manufacturers do. Some hatchbacks have huge rear screens with steep angles of rake requiring improved optical quality. Manufacturers have demanded glass which is completely flush with the body for reduced drag and wind noise. We also have today heated windscreens and side windows, tinted glass and glass which restricts heat transmission. We'll have more on car glass topics in coming weeks, but auto historians wonder if the takeoff of the safer laminated glass would have been as quick if Henry Ford hadn't had an accident. Henry Ford had a road accident, uh, which is reported in the press, uh, and so somebody from XXX actually sent a cable telling him what was available. And of course the product went from there.